I'm back in the cave, back home. Made it out of Berkeley alive. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun day. That was a, that was a really fun day uh, going out there. It, it's the atmosphere is really nice out there, especially that day. And I had a great time in Berkeley. Just a great time. It's always fun digging there. I don't go there very often, but when I do, I always have a blast. And um, you know, it was spur of the moment to even go there. Uh, I think when I woke up that morning, I thought it would be a good day to drive to the bay. So I filled up the gas tank and I was off. It was spur of the moment decision. And just as I was about 10 or 15 minutes away from Berkeley, I decided, you know what, I've never filmed a video where I show people where I dig. Uh, you just see the results, but you don't see where I do it at. So, but all I had on me was this, my, my smartphone. <laughs> that's, that's all I had to work with was this thing right here. Um, and it was the first time I ever used the video camera on this because uh, I have my own video camera so I, I really don't see the point of using this video camera. So this is all I had to work with to film my video of being in Berkeley and um, considering what I had here the video came out okay. Uh, yeah it's shaky, yeah the audio was kind of crappy but this is all I had to work with so that was my camera for the day. Anyway uh, I went up there with no records in mind Everything was spontaneous. Uh, I had no shopping list of what I ho was hoping to get. It's just, let's see what I find. And most of it was synth pop records, but oh well. This is what I found. I was really thrilled to find this one uh, from Roxy Music, Country Life. Um, I'm not a Brian Ferry fan. <laughs> and I'm not even a Roxy Music fan. I'm just a fan of that album cover <laughs> because that is a pretty fucking sexy ass album cover. And I've always been after it just for that cover. And um, I found the ridiculous, ridiculously priced um, reissue, which was like damn near 30 bucks. And I was like, you know, let me see if I could score a nice used copy of it. And it, it took a long time, but I finally found it. And my God, that is a hot looking cover. That's just hot. And, um, and it is on Atco. Uh, let's put that around so you Atco. And that glare is driving me nuts already. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not really aware of what's on here because I've never heard this record before. Uh, Instinct is telling me I probably won't be that into it because I'm not really a Brian Ferry fan, but um, hell, I'm a fan of that cover, so it is now finally in the collection. Uh, next up is Howard Jones, Cross That Line, a record I never see out there. I mean, everybody sees Humans Lib and... Uh, there's, there's two other albums after that, but very rarely do I see Cross That Line. It has a great song on here called The Prisoner and uh, the hit single, which the pop single on here was Everlasting Love, but some interesting sounds on here and it is on, a, like his other albums, on Electra. So that was a neat find. So was really surprised to see that. Okay, next up, uh, Catching Up with Depeche Mode. Found a really nice copy of this, and I think this is the one I, I grabbed this one in Am Amoeba, if I remember correctly. I kind of boxed them all together, so I kind of forgot what I found at which store, but and it came with the, uh, the original insert with all the random pictures of the band. So really cool, and this is on uh, Sire on Mute Records, which. When I take some of these records out, you're going to hear the word mute a lot. <laughs> but, um, been into synth pop lately, and uh, that's been dominating what I've been buying lately. Here's another Depeche Mode one. This one's called Construction Time Again. Uh, I've listened to the last one I showed you, but I haven't listened to this one yet. And the last one I showed you was like a, a, a singles compilation, so this is actually a studio album from Depeche Mode. And again, came with the original insert and Sire Mute, which we're going to hear a lot of in this video because I noticed since I'm buying a lot of synth pop, I'm seeing that Mute label on a lot of things I buy. <laughs> like this one from Yaz, Upstairs at Eric's. This is a fun record to listen to. I'm really glad I scored this one. Uh, it is their uh, first album. Which is weird because I think they're called Yazoo in, in the UK, but here in America it's called Yaz or something like that. 
Uh, it did come with the original insert, but the original insert is not in great shape. <laughs> so I had to pull out the paper insert. And like the Pesh Mode, Sire, Mute Records. Uh, that, that seems to be the label of, of the vinyl dig that I did. <laughs> But a uh, really fun record. I love the song Don't Go and Situation and Only You. Um, there's some really cool songs written on this album. And I also got their second one, Yaz, uh, You and Me Both. This one had uh, Nobody's Di the song Nobody's Diary. Um, I only listened to this once, but I like the first one better, but uh, this one's not bad. And again, original insert, but not much, and not much on it, uh, but uh, Sire, Mute Records is the label on this one. Both these albums are really good, so I'm really glad to score that. This I was surprised I found, because I found, this is a 12-inch single from Tears for Fears, uh, for the song uh, I Believe, and it has the OV strip on it, so it's a Japanese pressing. Uh, my last vinyl vid, I found the same thing, but for the song, um, shit, now I can't remember the name, the name of the song, I think it was Everyone Wants a Little Roller Shout, one of the two. And, uh, was really stunned to find, I guess, the other copy that came out with the OB strip, so really cool. And this one has, of course, a soulful re-recording of the song, I Believe, and Shout dub version. And on side two, Sea Song and uh, US remix of the song Shout. So, really cool find. And it's on Mercury. Pretty cool. Always cool to find these things with the OV strip. It's just a, just a great find. I'm a big Tears for Fear fan. Well, really, mostly of the song, that, uh, the album that came out in 85, Songs in the Big Chair. Uh, I did have some of the Seeds of Love. Wasn't really. I mean, I did like that album, but not as much as Big Chair, so, but still fun to collect the vinyl. Another one I got is uh, from the band XTC, uh, Sky Lurking, or Larking, I should say. Really cool. This one is a gold stamp promo. It's kind of hard to see if I'm focused there, but gold stamp promo. Um, don't really collect much ecstasy or any ecstasy in my collection, so I thought I'd start here to see how this one uh, fares out and um, maybe I'll get some more of their albums. Um, we're starting to listen to some of their stuff online. We're starting to get into it, and this is on Geffen. Uh, a band that, of course, I've heard of, but uh, don't have any of their albums, so I thought I'd start here. If it, if it sounds killer to me, and then I'll, I'll collect some more. So ecstasy. Another band I'm just starting to get into is Ultravox. This is Vienna. Basically, I bought this because of the song Vienna. Um, because I've been getting a synth pop lately. I don't know why. I've avoided it for so many years. Um, the reason I didn't really like synth pop because when I first became a drummer and started listening to music, I was into bands. I was into bass, drums, and guitar, and so I was into bands, and there's the label there. Oh, did I have No, I did Yeah, there's the label. So I was into bands, and, you know, synth pop it was usually just a guy on key, programming all the keyboards and a singer. And, you know, to me that wasn't a band. The, though I like the keyboard and what it can bring to music and the sounds you can get out of it, uh, I had trouble getting into synth pop when it was really popular, so I was, because I was, like I said, more into bands. Uh, but lately I've been appreciating it for what it is and uh, been buying a lot of it. One of my favorite uh, synth-pop bands is OMD and um, I've been getting into their records a lot because the only OMD song I knew of was a song from Pretty in Pink which is a good song but I realize if you go to their earlier records uh, the earlier music was a lot better than If You Leave which was from Pretty in Pink so I was when I went to Berkeley. I was hoping to find some OND records and found a couple of early ones, like this one, um, "Architecture and Morality." Really love this album. This is really good. Uh, it has that single "Souvenir" and Joan of Arc, and Joan of Arc made of Orleans. Uh, just fant just a fantastic album. Really love this one. Uh, when I this is like the first thing I listened to when I came home from Berkeley. And I think I got this one at Rasputin. Uh, just a great album, like I said, first one I listened to, popped it on, and 
Oh man, uh, <laughs> I love the early records of OMD. Hopefully I can find uh, some more of them. Uh, this one is on Epic, the Epic label. Very nice. And it's cool when, because a lot of times when I buy albums, they gotta grow on me, gotta listen to them a few times. Not the case here. This one I dug off the very first listen. It really hooked me. And uh, this one, this record in particular, is a gold stamp promo. Not that that makes any difference, but that's what it is. Killer, I love this album. If you guys ever see this in the record store used, pick it up. This is a fun album. And I got another one, uh, Import, OMD, Dazzle Ships. Like, pretty cool packaging on this one. It's like gatefold. And it opens up like this. Really, really cool. And the album uh, kind of slips out of here, like so, to reveal that. So, interesting packaging for this record. And a nice little custom label on it. Really nice. Listen to this one is this one is enjoyable too. I think I like um, architecture and morality a little bit more than this one. But this is a good album. It starts off with a lot of short wave radio sounds. But the the songwriting is pretty solid on this one. So really really enjoyed this one. Dazzle Ships. Very cool album. It is an import copy. So it cost me a little bit more, but not much. I think I got this for eight bucks at Rasputin. So both all the OMD came from Rasputin. And I uh, was really glad to have found this. So cool stuff. As well as some 12 inch singles, OMD's Dreaming. I think this is a, it was a single from their best of LP. Really cool. Uh, this one I haven't spun yet, but I heard the song before because I have their best of on vinyl. And it's on AM. As well as the 12 inch single for Secret, which was off their album Crush that came out in 85. In fact, there's the album cover for Crush. Secret, really cool. And on the B side, we have Fire Gun and the Native Daughters of the Golden West, which that song is really killer. I really love it. And Fire Gun's a badass song, too. And of course, there's the AM label for it. So really cool to score the 12 inch singles. Here's another 12 inch single. Uh, this I never see out there and uh, was really thrilled to find this. It's from Marillion. It's called Market Square Heroes. Let me take it out of the sleeve here, get a better look at it. So Market Square Heroes, this came out in 1982. This is when uh, Fish was still the lead singer of the band. And um, I forget what album this is from, but it's a really great song. And on the, and also on side one is uh, Three Boats Down From The Candy. And on side two we have the song Randall, which is a 17 minute song. Uh, really, really happy to have scored this. I'm a big Marillion fan, so any kind of rare looking Marillion vinyl I could find, I just jump all over it. As you can see, it's on the EMI label. Uh, I never see the, I've never seen this period in any store, so. And uh, I think I snatched this one at Rasputin as well. And uh, was really happy to see that. Really happy to see that. A very rare uh, 12 inch single from Marillion. So this, this was a big find for me. As well as this, even though it's not, I don't hear him spoken about at all on the VC, was Bruce Hornsby being the range 12 inch single for the song Mandolin Rain. Really cool. I always loved. Bruce Hornsby. I love listening to his music. He's an excellent piano player, a top-notch musician. And um, to, but you really to get it, Justin, you gotta see him live. To see him live, he really brings it. He is him and his band are just fantastic. All the improv they do, they do it at the speed of music. He has some great musicians in his band. As you can see, that's on the RCA label. Okay, so oh, of course we got the. Uh, single Mandolin Rain, but also we got a live version of the song The Way It Is on side one. And on side two, a live version of the song Red Plains. And an instrumental version of the song Every Little Kiss. I mean, a fun 12 inch single. I love this collection of songs they put on this. Um, I, I think I got this at Amoeba. And um, when I brought it home, I think I listened to it like three times off this whole thing. Uh, very, very 
cool music to drink a beer too. I love this album. Or this single, I should say. Well, that's gonna be it. Just a few finds from, from Berkeley. I had a great time down there. Uh, it was just so fun to get out of the cave and uh, dig something. I mean, I, I've been to Berkeley before digging. At least like maybe the fourth or fifth time I've been down there for vinyl digging. And I always find some cool stuff. And uh, it was a beautiful day down there. Uh, the call, it's just down the street from the university and they had their gra uh, graduation ceremony that day. So as I'm walking, I'm seeing all the graduates walking around their cap and gowns throughout the, throughout the streets I showed in the video. And further down uh, to the entrance of the college, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of picture taking down there with uh, graduates and their families. It was a nice day to be down there. Uh, real crowded though, it was a little challenging to find parking and driving was a little stressful because it was so crowded, but once you found a spot and parked the car and walked around, it was really enjoyable. Uh, let me do a quick band update here. Um, let me show you something real fast. I should have had this ready before I turn the camera on. I'm sorry. But, uh, all right. Um, my band is going to be releasing a CD really soon. We finally finished it. <laughs> and um, we approved the artwork. And it's pretty much going to look like that. Uh, they're still being printed up. We're not done yet with it. But, um, yeah, June 8th is the day we're going to drop the album. We have a, a show scheduled for that, so it'll be our CD release show in Modesto, California. And uh, the name of the album is called This End Up. And this is, of course, the front cover. This will be the back cover. And, um, man, I can't believe it's done. <laughs> I cannot believe it's done. We're real, we're real excited, and we can't wait to uh, get it back from the... From the from the company that's pressing it for us and we're gonna hold it in our hands and geek out and um, get ready for our CD release show June 8th. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great day for our band and uh, everybody's really proud that we were able to accomplish this so and um, yeah so now we have an official CD and um, if anyone's interested in buying it um, when the day comes I'll leave a link where you can purchase it and I'll I'll ship it out to those who are interested. And um, uh, we just, ever since we uh, approved this artwork, we've just been real excited. And it's, it's, been a, it's been a great, it's been a great time for this band. Everybody's real proud of what they have been able to accomplish. Well, that's gonna do it for me. That's just uh, my Berkeley finds. And uh, I'll see all of you in the next video.